Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio, and in our last two videos, we've gotten our attack state set up, we've got an attack dummy that reacts when hit, however at the moment death is pretty lame, nothing happens, and the hits themselves could use a little extra effect. So in this video we're going to add a cool hit effect for when you slash the dummy, and an explosion for when he's destroyed. That's where we're headed in this video, let's get started. Let's start off with the easiest part, which is creating the hit effect. We're essentially just going to add an object onto our player that will play a hit animation each time we hit something. I'm going to start off by making this a completely separate object, however, as that will make animation easier, and I'm going to use a 2D sprite triangle. I'll call this one hit effects. If you're using the target dummy, there is a link in the description. We're just going to head into sprites, go to effects, and use hit effects. I'm going to be using effect number two here. Next, I'll just move my animation panel up here, click on the hit effects object that we want to animate, and let's create a new animation. I'll go to my animations folder, and let's just call this one hit effects. I'm just going to shift click each of these frames and drag them up into our animation panel. And when I hit play, you can see that it's super small. And also if I zoom in, it's quite blurry. So we do need to make sure that we've set up these sprites. Fortunately, we can edit them all at once if they're shift clicked, so let's just head up top here. I'm going to set these to 16 pixels per unit and apply those changes. That's looking much better. I'm also going to get rid of the blurriness by using point no filter. Excellent. And finally, in case of any discoloration, we've been using 32-bit RGBA, and I'll apply those changes as well. Now when I hit play, it's looking okay, except that it's really fast, so let's stretch this out just a little bit. Let's also make sure that the final frame of the animation plays for more than just one frame, so I'll just copy that and paste it down here. Alright, that's looking much better. Now that our animation's done, let's go ahead and drag this onto the sprite for our player, and then we can actually move it into place. We probably don't want a triangle floating around in this space, so I'm just going to select none as the sprite, and now we'll just have to turn this animation on whenever we want to play that hit effect. That said, you'll notice right now that it's in behind my player, and if I look at my player, you can see that both him and the target dummy are set to zero as their order and layer. So let's grab our hit effects and just move it to something higher than that, like say about layer 10, so that it actually renders in front of the player and whatever object is being hit. All right, excellent. All right, with that done, we can move our animation panel back down to the bottom here and head to our animator to set up our state transitions. Now at the moment, our hit effects will play by default, which we don't want. So let's right click, create a new state, and we can name this one idle. We'll then right click it and make it the default for this layer. Now we can just set up a transition so that whenever hit effects is called, it has a transition going back to idle. And here we don't need any condition. We do want to make sure, however, that it has an exit time of one, no duration, and the exit time will just make sure that it plays all the way through before going back to idle, which is nothing. With that done, we're ready to do our coding and just start by making a reference to the animator we just created, and we'll just call this one hit effects. We can then come on down into our attack method, and in here, right after the line where we check if we have in fact hit an enemy, before we deal the damage, we're just going to tell our hit effects animator that it should play its hit effects state. Keep in mind that this name needs to match not the animation we just created, but the actual state name itself. Back in Unity now, let's click on our sprite, which is where we have our combat script, and we just need to make sure that the hit effects object is dragged into that box. Now we'll be able to talk to the animator. When we hit play, we can now attack, and each time we actually hit the enemy, we should see our hit effect showing up. Alright, looking pretty good. Next up, let's make it so that this enemy actually does something when we destroy him. So if we want this enemy to explode into a rain of pieces when we defeat him, we're going to need to create those pieces. To do this, I'm just going to go into my idle animation here, and I'm actually just going to duplicate it and make another one that we can carve up into pieces. I'll rename this as idle pieces, and instead of a single sprite mode, we'll do multiple. I can apply that and then open the sprite editor. And then in here, let's just take our current selection and move it in so that it just gets the head. We can then rename this as dummy head. And then to add other pieces, we can actually just click and drag anywhere on here and it will make a new box. Let's go ahead and grab the shield, which can be dummy shield. Don't worry if you get it exactly perfect, it's just going to be broken pieces anyways. And then we can go ahead and do that for the body, the stand, and the sword as well. 
Once you're finished, we can apply these changes and close the sprite editor. Now you should be able to hit the little play button here to see all your pieces, and let's create our first piece. So I'm just going to grab the dummy body and drag it up onto the scene. Next, we'll add a rigid body so that it has some gravity, a capsule collider, or whatever shape you want to use, and just maybe click edit to make sure that it fits the shape properly. Now I'll just rename this as body, and then I'm just going to come to my assets folder and create a new folder, which we can put prefabs into. We can then just drag the body onto prefabs, you'll notice it turns blue. Now at the moment, if I were to hit play, you'll notice that it doesn't quite fall in the way you might expect a exploding piece to fall. So let's get out of here. We can go to our rigid body and let's just actually give this a little extra gravity. While we're here, let's add some linear damping. Additionally, I'm going to add some angular damping. When I hit play, it definitely is starting to look a lot more like a piece that has some weight and body to it. At this point, I'll just use Command D to duplicate that body, and we're just going to change up the way that they look. So let's grab the first one, and instead of body, we'll make this a head. We can open up our sprite renderer and drag the head inside of here. I also just want to edit the capsule collider to make sure that it does fit the shape, and actually that looks pretty good. I'll do the exact same thing for my shield, rename it, add the sprite, and then just make sure that the collider fits properly. And next up we'll do our stand, but a capsule collider doesn't necessarily work great here, so I'm just going to remove that component and add a polygon collider instead. I'll then just make sure that it roughly fits the shape of the object. Please don't go crazy with your polygon collider, it really won't make it feel more realistic, and actually it makes your physics more complicated the more edges you get. Finally, we'll do the same thing for the arm, which is also probably best served with a polygon collider. With all of those done, I'll go back to my prefabs folder, shift click all the new prefabs and drag them down, and yes, we want to make original prefabs. Alright, with those done we can delete the ones in game, and we're ready to do some coding. Now our code for this is going to take place inside of the enemy script, however, similar to how we listen for an on damaged event, we are also going to want to listen for an on death one. If we head over to our health script, you can see that we actually set this up earlier, so that any time the dummy's health gets to zero or less, he sends out an on death message. So let's start by subscribing to that. We can do this in on enable the same way we did with handle damaged, except that we'll just do on death. And whenever on death happens, we're going to call a new method called handle death. We then just want to make sure that we unsubscribe from this event in on disable. Then we can come down below here and create that handle death event. Now we're going to need a few different variables here, so let's come up top and create a header, which can just be for our death effects. Here we'll start with a serialized private field of game objects. This one's going to be array, as it's going to include all of our death parts. I'm just going to change my header here, as really it should be for death effects, not just the pieces. Alright, next up we need to decide how powerfully these pieces are going to go firing into the air, so we'll do a float here called spawn force, and I'm just going to set that equal to 5 to start. We'll also make a float for our torque, which will just control how hard they spin. I'll start this one off at 5 and we can try it out. Next will be the lifetime of these pieces, which is just how long they'll stick around after they've spawned into the scene. Alright, now let's head down to this handle death method. Now each time our dummy dies, we want to loop through every single one of the prefabs we've put into that death parts array. Now we do have to calculate a few things here. First of all, we need to find out what the rotation of these objects is going to be. For this, we're going to create a quaternion variable, which we'll call rotation. It's just going to be equal to quaternion.euler, and here we're going to do zeros on both the x and y axis, as it's the z we want to rotate on. And here we'll just generate a random range, somewhere between 0.5 and 1. That way it's guaranteed to actually rotate at least 0.5, but we'll get some randomization. Next, we want to actually instantiate the prefab, so we'll do this at this transform position, so wherever the dummy is, and for our rotation we'll just use that rotation variable we just created. Now that will get the pieces into the game, but we actually want to send them flying, and to do that we need to hold on to a reference to the part that we just instantiated. Now we can talk to that piece we just spawned in. First, let's find its rigid body. So again, we'll temporarily make a rigid body reference here which will just look on the part we just instantiated and get its rigid body component. Now that we've got the part, we've got its rigid body, we just need to calculate how we want it to move. So let's start off by coming up with a random direction. This is just going to be a new vector 2, and for the x, we'll pick a random range between negative 1 and 1, so either left or right. And then for the y, we'll have a random, we want to make sure these are positive so that it always goes upward, but somewhere between 0.5 and 1, that way they don't always all go up the same amount. 
Now we can apply that direction to our rigid body. So let's just get our rigid body and set its linear velocity to be equal to that random direction multiplied by our spawn force. Okay, we've made the pieces there flying in the air, we just gotta spin them. So let's give our rigid body a little bit of torque. And again, we'll use a random range here, which is just gonna be somewhere between a negative version of our torque and positive meaning they could spin in a clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. Finally, we have to choose a force mode and we're gonna use impulse here, which means we're just gonna give it a push at the beginning and then allow friction to kind of slow it down over time. At this point, let's get its lifetime ticking. So we'll say destroy this part at lifetime. So it'll count down however long its lifetime is and then destroy it. Now this will get all of our parts instantiating and ultimately destroying themselves, but we also wanna destroy the dummy. So as soon as we've put all these parts in, Let's destroy this game object. All right, back in Unity, there is just a little setup to do. Let's lock our inspector here on our target dummy and we can fill those death parts in. So I'm just gonna shift click each of the parts and drag them into here. With that done, we can tweak our numbers a little bit, but let's test it out first. All right, and when I get in the game, it works, but it's pretty uninspiring. So let's just up those numbers a little bit. I'm gonna move these spawn force and torque to 10 and let's give these a little extra lifetime as well. Finally, I'm just gonna set my dummy to two health so we can test this quickly. Now when I hit him, aha, that's much more satisfying. All right, that's working pretty well. You will notice though that we are getting a weird thing where when the pieces hit me, they kind of send me sliding backwards, which is probably not what we want. We're gonna do a little video where we clean up a few of those things as well as some slight issues with the jump and whatnot. That's coming up soon as well as a new state. We're gonna add some magic next. All right, hope to see you in that video. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.